Okay, so this problem's got multiple components to it, which makes me like it a lot because there are both dividend discount model problems as well as Gordon constant growth model problems as well as a couple of different interest rates. So I'm still in love and will continue to be with the timeline, so I'm going to work with that in this problem as well. So we've got what's labeled as the dividend discount model, and it's saying that stock A is expected to provide a dividend of $10 per share forever. So I'm going to put down A here, and our next dividend is going to be $10. I am going to indicate, though, that that is a dividend that's going to be forever. So what that really means is that's not just dividend one. That's dividend one to whenever the horizon decides to end itself. What that also infers, then, is that growth is zero. This $10 forever means it's never going to change at all. That's going to be critical for us when we come down into the problem later. So what that would look like on my timeline would be something like $10, $10, $10, with no idea of what the future price would be, and a horizon that's really forever. And my guess is that at some point they're going to ask us for a future or for a present value, a price, and we're going to deal with two different rates, 10% and 7%. So that's the first one that we're going to deal with. So why don't we go ahead and finish that one right now? So if we use the dividend discount model, which says that price is equal to div 1 divided by r minus g, we can use that one just as easily as any other perpetuity calculation. Perpetuity was something that was covered in the time value of money chapters. Because all it infers there, then, is that the growth is 0. So let's go ahead and put in that we have our two different rates, rate 1 and rate 2. And rate 2 will be 7%, and rate 1 will be 10%. So that I can use that formula as it is displayed, we'll go ahead and put that price is equal to div 1 divided by r minus then a g of 0. So our first price would be $100. I'm going to notate that then. That's at rate 1. So why don't we go ahead and do the same thing then for the second one which would say now this time we're going to use rate 2. And so rate 2 says take our next dividend of $10 divided by then our new rate of 7% with no growth would give us then answers of $100 and $142, depending on the interest rate, for what in essence is what's called a perpetuity. Let's take a look now at Part B. Part B has stock B expecting to pay a next dividend of $5. Thereafter, dividend growth is expected to be 4% forever. So in this particular case, the way you can think about it is here's your next dividend. But then that thing is going to grow by a basic future value of the previous year times 1 plus 0.04, the growth rate, raised to the first power. And so that would be the expected then amount of the next dividend. The next one would be the 5 times 1.04, then raised to the second power, and etc. And that, too, looks like it would go on forever. And we have no idea, then, what the future price would be. We're looking, again, at rates of 10% and 7%, and being, again, asked for, well, what does price look like? So this one looks to be a fairly straightforward Gordon constant growth model formula, where we've got two different rates. Let's go ahead and copy and paste those down here. And then we're going to have a price at rate 1 and a price at rate 2, where we'll use the basic formula of P is equal to div 1 divided by r minus g. Again, same thing that we used up above. So now let's take a look at that then. So here is your $5 dividend 
divided by the 10% rate minus the 4% growth. It says under those conditions, you're looking at $83.33. And then under a lower rate of return requirement of 7%, you're looking at $166.00. And 67 cents. So that would be a standard Gordon constant growth model approach to doing part B of this problem. So let's put it all together then into part C, where we're going to need to combine pieces from the previous problem, where we now see that stock C is expected to pay its next dividend also of $5. That would be in the next period. But then it indicates that growth will be from periods 2 through 6. So for the following five periods after the next period, growth is going to be a fixed amount. And that amount is going to be 20%. After that, though, growth beyond year 6, so starting into year 7, is going to be nothing. So you've got two separate growth rates. So how in the world are we going to deal with that? Well, as always, we're going to try to estimate what dividends could be. So we have $5 that will come in that first period. Then we're going to have to grow that $5 times 1 plus 20% raised to the first power. Then we're going to have to grow that one again. So that's going to be the $5 multiplied by 1.2, then raised to the second power, and then et cetera, et cetera for that one. It's mad at me. What did I not press? OK, there we go. And then eventually, it's going to flatten out so that there will be no more growth. And our horizon, though, looks like it will end at the end of the seventh year. And why the seventh year? We'll get to that in a minute. Because we will be able to calculate a future price. But we're going to do that as of the sixth year. And this is similar to the problem that we did yesterday in the class. That was understandably a little bit of a challenge. So let's take a look at how that's going to work again. All right. so. Why don't we go ahead then and plot out what that cash flow stream is going to look like. So let me build our standard model of we've got our rate, and there's and we're going to have our periods. We're going to need cash flows in that come from dividends, cash flows in that come from the future price. And then you'll have our total cash flows, which one we can do our present value, and then add it up to get our final price answer. So we know that we're going to have periods 1 through 7. And we know that our first dividend was equal to the $5. So I'll make a quick reference there. Equals go up, point to the $5, hit Enter. The next one would be then $5 growing at 20%. So equals the previous period. Multiplied then 1 plus, let's find the interest rate. The interest rate for growth will be 20%. I'll lock that reference so that for the next 2, 3, 4, 5, 6th periods, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 total years, we've got our dividend then growing by 20%. Thereafter, it indicated for us in the problem, growth would be 0. So that would just mean no matter how far out we went, we would expect to see the exact same dividend over and over again. That's going to matter to us in a little bit. Because what we need to figure out then is if we have a series of predictable dividends up to this point in time, we can calculate future price how? Why, when things change into being constant? Well, what becomes constant? This is clearly not constant. That's 20% growth. This is constant, and that's growth of 0 that we documented up above. So we should be able, then, to think about our lives as we're standing in year 6. 
as we're standing in year six, things suddenly become predictable. And that's the constancy of the future dividend. So we can use then the Gordon constant growth model now to determine if this is our next dividend. We're going to divide that then by the rate, which we will add up here in just a moment, and then subtract off our growth rate. And that will give us a price over here. Let me go add that data because we have the same then rates, rate 1 and rate 2. So what that tells us is then we would expect the price at the end of the sixth year when we're looking into the future and things are now constantly predictable to be 124.42. So let's go ahead and add up our cash flows in that come from our dividends plus our future price. We then go ahead and calculate the present value where first we're going to use the 10% rate. I'm going to lock it. Then we are going to go ahead and I didn't lock it, so let's make sure we do that again. F4, there we go. Comma, then our number of periods will be in the column. Comma, 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 comma. And then so hit a minus, so to flip the sign on the total of our cash flows. And now copy and paste this thing across to get our present values. These we aren't going to want because we said we're going to stop our analysis at that period. So it's really these cash flows that are going to matter to us as we determine then our sum of 120.97 at the 10% interest rate, which doesn't feel right to me. Hang on. Aha, there's the culprit right there, which is I locked my rate on C31 which was intended to be C30, so that was a small problem. And why does it need to be C30? I have to use the same rate to discount that I used over here to do the Gordon constant growth future value estimate. So just a wrong little reference there. Gets me back on par. So now I've got a solid estimate for at that original 10% capitalization rate, it looks like my price would be $104.51. So now I'm going to go through the same exercise, as soon as this thing is done saving, working on part C with rate number two, the 7% capitalization rate. And I'm going to copy and paste so that it will be quicker, but I do want to revisit the rate piece just to make sure you're following. So let's take this whole thing. And let's put it down below then. But this time we are going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to do it for rate number two. The dividends are going to be the exact same as they were before. So I'm going to point reference my previous ones. I can copy and paste those all the way across then. And my sum will be the exact same. So I don't need to change that. But my future price will be different because, again, I'm going to use the Gordon constant growth model to indicate that this is dividend one divided by now a new rate. And the rate that we want to use this time is the 7% less the growth rate of zero. And so notice that we get $177 here for the price at 7%, whereas before we got the $124. So a bit of a difference with a different interest rate. And so now for here then, this is where we have to make sure that we're pointing to our right rate again. So I'll do it the way you guys like to see. Let's make sure we're on C31 here. Let's lock that rate. Click OK there. Copy and paste these things across. And it appears that in our second instance then, at a rate of 7%, that last stock, stock C, should be worth $156 and 50 cents. So what that last problem did is a nice job of combining predicting dividends with future values, predicting a future price once things had gone constant by using the Gordon constant growth model, and then by putting them all together on a single consolidated timeline to allow us to use the dividend discount model to get our final